This is Fred from Profile, and today I'm talking with Courtney Swain from the excellent Sixtet, Bentney from Boston. How are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, very good. Uh, first, can you tell us a little bit about the story uh, of Bentney and how it all started? Sure. Um, so we, all of us met at uh, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Um, and uh, basically, Ben, the guitar player, and I started writing music together. And uh, for the first four or five years, um, we were doing a lot of, you know, writing and touring by ourselves. Um, we released two albums, and we played probably about 200 or 250, 250 shows shows if not more independently uh in the first five years by ourselves and uh we were getting really burned out around uh 2015 because you know it just felt like we were kind of bashing our head against the ceiling um but then uh you know it started to pay off in the sense that uh we started catching people's attention um and so we got signed to the the awesome Cuneiform Records uh, in uh, late 2015. So last year we put out a um, uh, new album, our third album called Say So from them. Yeah. Um, it's just about a year ago. And then um, we had some amazing opportunities last year where you know we did a lot more touring. And then uh, we got signed to a booking agency and we also uh, got to open for the Dillinger Escape Plan wow. um, and that kind of led to a signing with um, our new label uh, Inside Out uh, originally based in Germany um, and so we have another album coming out uh, in one month um, and uh, we also recently just toured with um, Thank You Scientist which is another wow. great band um, yeah. So, you know, basically we were very independent for the first five, six years and the last two years or so, um, our, our career arc has sort of changed and we've had a lot more people take interest and sort of help us kind of take it to the next level. Great, great. Uh, that's cool. That It brings me to my next question because Len Animal... Uh, mm -hmm. Your fourth studio album will be released on June 23rd, if I'm yes. correct. Yep. Okay. Any particular theme uh, throughout the album? Um, there was no theme to the album when we wrote it. Um, I think most of the, for our last four albums, there's there's been no theme uh, when we're writing the music. You know, we've wanted to do a concept album for a while but we haven't uh but basically you know we look at the collection of songs once we're done writing and there's usually kind of a overarching theme uh for example with land animal i think the theme ended up being sort of uh coping with struggle um so every song on the album is dealing with some sort of struggle um that you know either we were feeling when we were writing it or it's kind of a concept um and it's an album that's just sort of you know half being like it's all right you know we all struggle and then half being like you know fight back um you know take a stand kind of thing yeah uh how would you describe this album to someone that unfortunately doesn't know anything about your music? Um, <clears throat> I think um, that's a good question. <laughs> like, how would you introduce it? Or, right. Right? So, someone I was doing an interview recently, and someone described our music as deviant pop, uh, and I really love that um, because. Um, I think that's what it really is. You know, Land Animal, uh, compared to our last album, it's much more about experimenting with groove. Um, but the song structure and harmonically, it's much more based in kind of the pop realm. 
Um, so it's it's got that sort of pop element, and then we have the rock and the classical and the prog influences from what the six of us grew up listening to. Um, <clears throat> And that sort of blends together to create this deviant pop. So it's it's something that sounds familiar in a way, um, yeah. but it's it's surprising at times. And I think uh, for some people it hits immediately, um, and for some people if it doesn't catch you on first listen, I think it's something that takes like a couple listens to sort of dig into. Yeah. Like, yeah, everyone seemed to have uh, a hard time or their own way to define your music. Like, some would say it's uh, art rock, pop, minimalist. Be I, sure, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know what a minimalist. <laughs> Avant-garde, avant-jazz, crossover prog, neo-prog. Right. Well, how would you describe it? Um, I, I like to think about it in stages. So the description of the band. So, you know, someone asks you what kind of music you play. I always just say I play rock music, right? Because it's basically <laughs> rock music. Oh, yeah. It's in that genre. It's not classical. It's not quite pop. So basically it's rock music. So, you know, then you sort of have, like, this pool. And then within that, I think uh, I like to talk about the mentality more than what it sounds like. Yep. So in that sense, I think it's it's experimental. Uh, it's also progressive in terms of uh, not like the genre itself, but how we're thinking about composition and you know textures and how we incorporate different instruments or technology into our own writing. Uh, yeah, that that's how I like to talk about yeah. it. <laughs> Talking about writing, how how did the 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 songwriting process uh, and who was responsible for what? So, <clears throat> our band, uh, we tout this thing where uh, we're a democratic collective. Um, and uh, so in our writing, all six of us contribute. Um, now, that being said, the nitty gritty is basically that someone will bring in sort of a demo uh, at a different degree of finishedness. You know, it could just be a verse and a chorus, or it could be really fleshed out. Um, and then we'll sort of sit down with the six of us and just tear it apart and then sort of put it back together. Um, and <clears throat> uh, we all have, most of us have side projects in the band, okay. and but none of them sound like Bent Knee, uh, which is sort of a testament to the fact that, you know, it's not really about the demo we start with so much as the process of kind of, scrapping and then putting the song back together. Um, and I think what we're most concerned with when we write is um, what the story of the band is. Oh, sorry, the story, story of the song is. So, you know, in terms of form or dynamics or composition, we try not to do anything just for the sake of, like, flashiness or just for the sake of, like, because it sounds good you know we're looking for something that sort of uh, characterizes what the song is and what the story is trying to convey yeah okay well what would you say is the big difference between this last album compared to the first three um <clears throat> Well, basically, I think it's better <laughs> um, because, you know, every every time we've made an album, we've tried to make it the best we can. And um, in that sense, I think we've, we've learned from everything we've done in the previous albums. And it's, it's, the songs are better, and I think the production is better. Um, and besides that, I mean, the difference I like to talk about between Say So, uh, our last album, and Land Animal, our, our upcoming album, is that Say So was largely about um, experimenting with song form, I think. Um, so there's a lot of different styles, you know. If you went and wrote down kind of what what section each song was, it would be very diverse. You know, you'd take a song like Eve, you have an intro, instrumental, verse, 
it, you know, interlude, verse, you know, like there's no real chorus. And then you take a song like Hands Up and it's, it goes verse, 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 chorus, <laughs> chorus. Verse, chorus, you know, it's just sort of like we're just trying to mess around with yeah. um, kind of popular song form. And so, but when you look at Land Animal, uh, a lot of the songs in terms of form are a lot more straightforward. Okay. Um, and harmonically, too, they're a lot more straightforward. But my favorite example is if you take a Holy Ghost and you listen to the chorus, <clears throat> it's super catchy. It's just two chords, you know, I'm going, hey, I feel it, that part. And, you know, it's just, it's like, oh, cool. And then you start listening to what Gavin, our drummer, Jessica, our bass player, and Ben are playing. And they're essentially, they memorize this, I don't know, like 32 bar uh, rhythmic phrase that doesn't re repeat. So they're going, you know, so there's no repetition in that rhythm. And that's sort of the tension that's driving that section forward. So, you know, it's a lot more about the groove than the song structure or the harmony. So I think that's the big difference between the last two. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the first album under the, uh, the record company Inside Out. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, can, you, can you share how that happened? Because it's a renowned um, uh, record yeah. company. Yeah, yeah we're, um, <clears throat> we've been really, really lucky with record labels, you know, working with Cuneiform was a really wonderful experience, and uh, Inside Out, um, <clears throat> we had talked to them very briefly for Say So um, at one point, um, but what happened uh, with um, this new album was, was really uh, that we went on the Dillinger tour, and basically to that showed them that in a way our, our appeal is is very wide you know it's not just it's not just prog it's not yeah. just pop it's not just one thing you know here we're out touring with like a math core band and it worked and it was really great um, and that sort of sparked their interest um, and I think they kind of took us on as a, a long-term project in a way which we're really grateful uh, of um, we wanted to work with them because you know, I think there are a couple of things that are important for us. You know, what are the people like that we'll be working with? And will we have the artistic and creative control that we want to have? Yeah. And then will this help us get our music to more people? <clears throat> and basically, we thought about it and it was yes to all three questions. Uh, and that was, you know, it's like, great you know that's that's what we're looking for so you know why not like I you know there's some really wonderful artists on inside out oh, yeah. um, and a lot of really like <clears throat> established acts as well as really fresh acts that are you know making really interesting music so yeah we're really excited about it good that's really good uh, beginning of June you'll uh, you'll be touring the US mm -hmm. um, any plans on uh, visiting other countries or more venues to be had on the uh, on the tour? Um, yes. Uh, so we don't have any specifics yet, but we want to go back to Europe. Um, I guess in the next year or so, when the time is right. You know, it's just yeah. it really depends on timing, but. We were in Europe for the first time last summer, and the experience was incredible. You know, we we played in uh, our first show was at the Brig Hertzberg Festival in Germany, and uh, <clears throat> it was really crazy because in that one festival, in that one show, we probably played for more people than we played for combining all three of our first tours. You know. <laughs> It was ridiculous. There's like a couple thousand people, and I was just thinking of how when we first started touring, we were playing for you know 10, 20 people. So to go to another continent and have that kind of experience was was really amazing. Yeah. Um, and we've never been to the UK either, so something we're hoping to do. Um, and we're definitely doing more dates later in the summer. Um, okay. We're just kind of trying to be strategic about um, you know how things come together, like. 
Right now we're most interested in um, opening for bigger acts just so we can just meet more new fans and, you know, just have that experience, I suppose. Um, so, you know, but we also don't want to be sitting at home. So it's kind of like a tricky balance between waiting for someone to give us a call and then also just taking initiative and be like, okay, well, you know, nothing came through for this time period, so we're going to go ahead and do this, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And you mentioned before the recording uh, that uh, you played in uh, about an hour from, from here, an hour from Quebec yeah. City called Victoriaville. How uh -huh. was it? It was great. Um, it's uh, called a uh, uh, Festival International de Musique Actuelle de Victoriaville. Um, and uh, it was funny because someone, I was talking to someone and they were like, you know, it's an improv festival, right? And I was like, okay, you're like, I don't, we don't really improv. We're just going to show up and play our songs. Um, but it's a really wonderful festival. Um, they had some amazing artists this year. They had Colin Stetson. Um, Anthony Braxton, uh, they had Nels Klein uh, and uh, Julian Lodge, uh, really wonderful artists and it was a fun experience, um, it's a very different sort of listenership, you know, it's different from like a rock show, these are people who are just really there to delve deep, so, you know, it's just like silent, <laughs> we would go from song to song and, you know, we do, sometimes we do seamless transitions between songs uh, when we play live. And uh, it's just just silent, and I could just feel the you know people just like were there to absorb the music, and uh, I you know it's it's always wonderful to get to work with um, you know people who care about music and are really talented um, on sort of the production side uh, too. And uh, yeah, the staff was wonderful, and we had a really wonderful time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh we're near the end of the uh, interview, but uh, before I let you go, I have a few more questions, but they will only require one word answers. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you can you can go more, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really I'm the... really like long winded, so I'm gonna have to try hard on this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll try that one. What is your favorite Boston band? Uh, uh, I don't know. Um. I like Pile. Pile. Yeah, they're they're sort of a, they're kind of like a, in, uh, they're about the same size as us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, in. and you're allowed to say pass eh, if you don't want to okay. answer. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who within the band has musical taste most similar to yours? Uh, I think Vince, uh, the synth Vince. guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, name the most beautiful female voice. Mm, I would have to name two. <clears throat> I would say Fiona Apple or Chelsea Wolf. Okay. Name a festival you would love to be invited to play at. Uh, Fuji Rock Festival. In which, Japan. which one? Fuji Rock. Fuji. The, yeah, it's in, it's like it's by the Fuji Mountain in Japan. Oh, nice! That's like a dream festival. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Which is your uh, your own personal favorite track on the new album? Um, <clears throat> I like Terrorbird a lot. Okay. The first one, one. Yeah. One word to describe the track. Uh, exhilarating. Oh, nice. Uh, what is the last album you have listened to in its entirety? Oh, uh, let me look at my, my, my playlist and I can tell you exactly. <laughs> Just looking at my phone. Uh, what did I listen to? Oh, I was listening to Meta by Carbom. Okay. Yeah. Do you like that album? Oh, I don't know about it. <laughs> You're going to have to send it to me. <laughs> I love, I love, I'm like, uh, Car Bomb was on the Dillinger tour uh, for a little bit, and uh, I really like their stuff. I've, I've been listening to Meta a lot. Oh, yeah? How, how do you spell it? M-E-T-A? Uh, M-E-T-A, yeah. Okay. Uh, like meta, meta, metaphor or meta, metaphysics. Yeah. Okay, I'll check on that for sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, what is the last concert you attended as a fan? Oh, oh, that's a tough question. 
Uh, <laughs> what was oh oh yeah I went to I went to see uh Oh Brother and Biffy Clyro at uh Paradise in Boston. Um that was a lot of fun. Uh again uh Oh Brother was on the Dillinger tour too, so I basically just uh went to say hi and just see their play their set. But it's the tough part about well, I don't know if it's the tough part. I struggle with it is that being a musician, I'm broke, and I'm also at uh, shows all the time, so I just don't go to shows a lot, which is like a real problem, but anyways, yeah. Yeah, well, this is the end, but uh, right. if, you, if there's anything you'd like to add before I let you go, that's perfect timing. Uh, not not really. Thank you for, uh, no. thank you for doing this, and uh, I hope, uh, so you already have the album. Yes, we do. Yeah, it's okay. uh, it's being uh, reviewed right now, so it's gonna be online within the awesome. next few days. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, it's really really good, and love your voice. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I hope we make it up to uh, Montreal, Quebec, um, area again, uh, and we will get to play for you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So thank you very much, Courtney. It was a pleasure to have you on profile, and best of luck with the the brand new album to be released on the twenty third of June land animal. Thank you. Thank you.